What are the tips to land the next sales job? I'll go ahead and give you a clue. One of them is not wearing a Mickey Mouse Hawaiian shirt to the interview. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brandon Boyd. Welcome to the Brandon Boyd Show. Don't forget to be awesome and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you like this video to get more unique content on how to manage life, money, and everything in between. There's a lot to talk about, and we appreciate your support so far. So today, I want to talk about the 10 tips for landing your next sales job. Look, the economy's taking kind of a wild swing in 2020. That would be putting it mildly. A lot of people are you know, happy in their jobs, but there's a lot of people that are out of work right now that are trying to figure out ways to get back in and find a role to make money for their family. And we're going to talk about it. And specifically in this video, we're going to focus on sales jobs. I've been fortunate enough to be in sales for about the last, oh geez, 16 years, which is scary. That makes me feel really old, but I've been in sales for a long time. Been in a lot of interviews and talked to a lot of interviewers about what to do, what not to do, and how to best position yourself for the next role next time one becomes available. So let's start out and go down the list of the top 10 ways to get your next sales job. Number one, this one is super easy and anybody can do it, all right? And that is apply, apply, apply. Do you like my accent, by the way? Apply, apply, apply. That's how I talk, get over it. That's the way the channel's gonna be. Suck it up with me. All right, all right, all right. How you doing? Make sure you apply for as many positions as you can. You'll learn that if you've never been in sales, sales is all a numbers game. There's a certain number of customers out there and you have to convert a certain amount in order to meet your goals in your sales career. The same thing goes when applying for jobs. So let's say that there's 10 different jobs out there that are sales related, but maybe you only want one or two of them. Doesn't matter, go ahead and apply for all of them that way you at least have the opportunity to find a role and get asked for an interview. You may not get asked by your first choice for an interview, okay? It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It's not you, it's me. It just means maybe they're hiring an internal candidate, somebody they already know, all right? Spread yourself out a little bit, apply to as many jobs as you can, and then narrow it down once you have some options on the table. Apply for everything that you can find. You can do this online. If you wanna go in person, that makes a big presence as well. Find a way to do it. These places are not gonna come out and try to find you. There's a lot of people out there looking for jobs. They don't need to come and knock on your door. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. And say, hey Brandon, uh, would you come work for us? We really want you to interview. Not how it works. Everything is online pretty much. Just make sure you go on, create accounts with these different companies, look at their HR profiles, see what careers are available, and go to town and apply, apply, apply. The second thing to do, make sure you prepare a professional resume. Okay, don't put this together with a typewriter, or I don't think people use typewriters anymore. So. So excuse me, I'm old. Again, I've been in sales for 16 years. People don't use typewriters, they use a computer. Okay, but make sure you use your computer and put together a professional resume, okay? And if you're using a typewriter to, to do your resume, you're doing it wrong, okay? So get rid of that. Get a computer, put together your resume. That We're gonna talk about that more on this channel as well. I'm gonna share my own uh, professional resume and kind of show you what that looks like. But there are templates online that you can literally plug and play your information in. It will say, put your name here. My name is, my name is, it's name Zane. Brandon, put your name here. What? street do you live on? Put your address here. It's so simple and there's so many free tools to use when you get out there. When you're creating a professional resume specifically for sales, make sure that you're focusing on numbers, okay? Just about any sales position that you're going to come across is going to want to know, okay, if you had a goal of selling 100 units at a previous job, what were you to goal? Did you sell 105 units? Okay, great. We want to know that. Sales resumes need to be very numbers driven because they want to know how you're stacking up against everybody else that's applying, right? We've just told everybody to apply for everything. So I've just opened up the floodgates to everything and I apologize, but I'm trying to help out. Make sure you use specific examples of what you've done and how you've met your goals. That's going to be critical when the interviewers are looking at your particular resume. And also 
comment down below if you don't mind. If, if you're interested in me going line by line through my resume, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I want to make videos that are relevant to you that you want to see. So if you do want to see me do that, please let me know. And again, give a thumbs up on this video. We really appreciate it. Number three, make sure you go out and talk to headhunters. What am I talking about? What's well, not the Kentucky headhunters? Let's all go. They were a band in the late 80s, right? I'm a Kentucky kid. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about somebody in a village that's out to get you. We're talking about headhunters that are out to find people to fill roles. So these large corporations will hire recruiting services to go out and find talent and then send them into the company for interviews. They're all over the place. The easiest way that I've found to do this is go onto LinkedIn. If you haven't been onto your LinkedIn profile in like six months and updated your job and updated your skills, Please do that. It's kind of important. You want to make sure you do that. Um, also sign up for the premium membership. I've talked to several interviewers that say, you know, when we see somebody that gets onto LinkedIn premium, then it lets us know that they are interested in being interviewed for roles and that they're actively looking for new jobs. It's like $20, $30 a month, something like that. I'm sure it fluctuates and it'll probably change after I've said this and everybody's going to think I'm lying about how much it costs. <sighs> you! You liar! Bottom line, it's not that much money, but if you do that for a month or two, it'll give you the opportunity to interview with more places in a short period of time, and you'll more than make up for that money. So make sure you do that. It's a good indicator to people that you're serious about looking for a new role. Also, when it comes to recruitment, reach out to other people that are in sales right now. If you want to get into medical sales or pharmaceutical sales, stop somebody and talk to them. Say, how can I do this? Can you put me in touch with someone? Who recruited them into their role? See if you can get in touch with them, at least get a name, an email address, a phone number, something. But don't just you know, go online and apply. That's the easy thing to do. The people that are gonna get the role are gonna take the next step and do the things that I just mentioned. Number four, make sure you come prepared for the interview. Okay, this should go without saying, but I have heard some absolute horror stories in interviews. Make sure that you're not waking up the morning of and trying to go through your resume again and remember what you said. Or the company that you're interviewing with or what time you're supposed to show up and all those kind of things. Make sure you're prepared. Within that, make sure you know why somebody should pick you and why you are picking the company to interview with. Why? Because they're gonna ask you. All right, they're gonna ask you those two questions at some point, they're gonna say, okay, why should we hire you? If you don't know the answer and you sit there and, hmm. Well, that's, well, that's a, a really, really good, good question. question. I don't, I don't know. know. You're gonna be in a lot of trouble, okay? Just be prepared for that. But they're also gonna ask you, why do you wanna work for us? You need to think about how your specific skills can relate to what that company is looking for. If you don't come prepared, you're not gonna be able to answer those questions and interviewers know it. They can spot it, you're not the only person they're interviewing that day and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your stuff together and ready to go. Within this again, Know your resume front to back, cover to cover. You shouldn't even have to look at your resume in front of you. If you're referencing your resume, let the interviewer look at your resume and you watch them and see what they're looking at while they're looking at your paperwork. I can recite mine almost line by line. I know everything I've done every single year and what my goals are. So when I'm looking at the interviewer, I'm able to gauge their body language because I'm not sitting hovered looking at my resume cowered in the corner like I don't know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what's on there and I'm watching their response to the way I'm explaining my resume because most likely they're going to say, hey, can you walk me through your resume? If you can't walk yourself through your resume, you sure as heck ain't going to be able to walk them through it. So make sure that you're confident when you're talking about it and it also gives you the opportunity to read their body language as you're giving your career story on your resume. Number five. After the interview is over with, and this is so important, and I can tell you almost every interviewer looks for this, make sure if you do nothing else, even if you bomb the interview and you walk out and you feel like, I'm not going to get this job, make sure that you follow up quickly with the interviewer. Okay, what do I mean by that? If you're interviewing, let's say that there's a career fair and where they're doing multiple interviews throughout the day, have some thank you cards with you so that when you leave the room to interview, you go out to the lobby or you go out to your car and you write thank you cards that say thank you for allowing me to interview. Well, thank you, Andy. Thanks. I feel like I can bring XYZ to the company. I hope to move forward in the next step. Look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks so much, Brandon. So simple. This can be done in an email as well. If you can't send something personally, just do it in an email. Make sure at the end of the interview that you ask for their contact information. Otherwise, 
how in the world are you going to get a thank you to them? All right? Even if you wanted to follow up, you don't have a way to do it. So make sure as you're closing out the interview that you get their contact information because you're going to want to make sure you follow up. It's going to be key. And I can tell you just about every interviewer I've ever talked to has said, well, they didn't follow up. So I couldn't move them along. That's a bad deal. It takes two minutes to do. Just do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop it. Stop it. Hold up. Hold the phone. Hold the tablet, the computer, whatever you're watching this video on. After editing, it became pretty clear that this video was going to be a little bit too long for one single video. What we're going to do is split it up into two videos and stay tuned for part two of how to land your next sales job. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click the alerts button so you'll stay up to date on when the next video drops, and we will see you soon.